sorry for you anyway. Where's the other one? Oh, the other one. Okay. <laughs> this evening's game is between the visiting Marcellus Mustangs and the home of Chittenango Bears. Please stand for playing of our national anthem. see in the window if you uh you have to hold it down no. no you just tap it and then you untap and then you tap it again can someone say last minute <laughs> can someone say last minute well of course you Hello Bears fans and welcome tonight to our coverage of the boys lacrosse game. The Chittenango Bears take on the Marcellus Mustangs and the game is underway. I'm here with Andrew Larson tonight. Say hi to everyone Andrew. Hi to all of you at home. And hopefully we have a good one on our hands. So at Chittenango, it's a tough week. They had a game last night. They're playing again tonight and uh, I believe they have a game Thursday uh, in their final push for sectionals. I believe they need four more wins in order to secure a spot. So this will be a big game tonight. Well, Brandon, I have to say I'm a little out of touch with how their season's been going. What uh, what happened yesterday? They played Carthage, who I believe is ranked 14th in the state for their uh, class. So it was a tough it was a tough game. It was close at halftime, but Carthage had a senior night and pulled away in the second half and. Right off the bat here, I believe that's number nine for Marcellus. It's number ten. Number ten. Gabe Van Order scores 
the opening goal. Sneaks one past Carson Macy Egg. Well, not the best it starts for the Bears. We'll see if they can bounce back, maybe win this face off. So back to what you were, or what we were talking about last night, they lost to Carthage, but that's a good team, and hopefully tonight they'll bounce back. Starting this game down one nothing, I don't think it's anything too hard to overcome. As Spurgeon loses a face off to number four Nate Garlow, who I was just telling Andrew earlier, I believe he played football for the Mustangs. He was a running back. He was a pretty good player, pretty good athlete. Brennan, do you know how many games the Bears have left in their season? I'm not entirely sure. I think uh, it's like seven now after playing last night. I could be wrong, but it's somewhere around there. As number 14, I think he might have been a sub, so we don't have his name, but he scores for the Mustang, so not the best of starts. It's not ideal. This Mar Marcel squad, I believe, they're having a pretty good season. I saw earlier that they beat Tully by, I believe, du double digits earlier on. They have a shared loss. They Both both teams tonight lost to Kaz. Marcel's had a close game against ESM earlier where they won by one. Well, Marcellus wins another faceoff, and Brennan, I noticed that the Bears are packed in tightly on defense, and they're allowing Marcellus to pass the ball around, but it's yeah. an interesting strategy. They don't want to chase him all the way out. Yeah. I'm sure Mr. Schwan will would be happy with Marcellus taking shots from the 30-yard line all night. Easier for Carson Maciag, where he's showing off his wheels early on in this game. And I believe he won possession Carson Maciag with lightning speed well we've seen already that Marcellus has a couple of fast players but they're no match for Carson no way no how and looking at some of the Marcellus games they did play Chittenango early on in the season they won 15 to 5 but this Chittenango team's had a couple injuries they're coming back starting to get healthy let's see if they can't change that tonight Trevor Butler gets past his defender, takes a shot that bounces wide of the goal. Ball will stay with Chittenango. Carl Farber won the race to it. Carl with the aired pass goes over the head of Ryan Pitt. There's a little scuffle for the ball. And looks like possession will go to the Mustangs. Yeah, it looks like the Bears defense just stepped over midfield there. Coop, the enforcer young, just came into the game. For those of you that don't know, yeah, don't know why I call him that. Early on we in the season we covered a game and he just will hit anybody. So I gave him the nickname, The Enforcer. I only know Cooper as the flea. From his basketball days. Back in middle school. Great defense there by the Bears. Ryan Pig takes it away. He's going upfield and he breaks through. Three defenders. I wonder who would win in a race, Ryan Pitt or Carson Maciag, as they both show off their speed early on in this game. I'd put my money on Carson. I'm not sure why Carson just dove across the net there, but might have saved the shot, and Marcells will maintain possession. Mustang swinging around. Mm -hmm. 
number 10. He's already got one goal on the night, trying to find an opening. Good defense there by the Bears. His number 24 tries to get a shot and a good save from Carson, although I don't know, he realized it and he scoops it up. Sounds like it might have hit the pipe. Cooper, the enforcer Young gets tripped up. Did not lose the ball. The ref's letting it play on. Well, the ref threw a flag there. Interesting. They let it go up until Coop lost the ball. So now Seth Spurgeon, number 19, takes it up for the Bears. Bears swinging it around. They get a shot. That's wider than that. And Grand Zarnacki will start with the out of bounds. Grand start behind the goal. Wide pass to Carl Farber and that sells out of bounds. So Marcellus will take over possession. Well, that's sloppy from the Bears early on. They really need to pick up the intensity if they're going to come back from 2-0 down. Plenty of time, Andrew. 6.30 to go in the first. Well, I agree. There is plenty of time, but they can't afford mental mistakes like that. They need to be focused. Speaking of mistakes, Marcellus just did the same thing and turned it right back over. Well, now let's see if Chinengo can capitalize on that unforced error. As Seth Spurgeon picks up the ball. We'll go one-on-one -on -one with number 13. Yeah. He shows off his wheels. Seth is pretty quick. Leaves one player on the ground in his dust. Well, as fast as Carson ends, I'd have to take Seth in a race against him. I'm not too sure about that. Trevor Butler says, I'll take this one myself. And he finds the back of the net on the board for the Bears. First goal. Taking on three defenders there, looked like. It looks like we're going to get a replay of this. Well, Brennan, I think that's exactly the type of intensity that the Bears needed, and hopefully that goal will kickstart them off to a comeback. Never know. Well, this replay is going all the way back to when Marcellus threw it away, so Bears fans will get an extra chance to see what happened. A second look at Seth's blazing speed. Well, what's happening right now is Christian Sirio taking it off the face off. Trying to get some offense going for the Bears. Was he the one that won the face off, Brennan? I believe the ref ca called a penalty or something, so he stopped play and just gave possession to the Bears. I was sort of watching both the replay and there's Trevor's goal again. I was watching both the replay and the game. Cooper Young got hung up on the defender's stick and Ended up on the ground, and Marcellus took over possession. Good hit there by number 22 for the Bears. It's Billy Demand. Well, they're pressing Marcellus, but Marcellus is passing it nicely as a spin move there from number 13. Emmett Berry. He passes out to number 10, Gabe Van Order. Emmett Berry, what a name that is. Sounds like an NFL running back at, between Emmett Smith and Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders. Yeah. Shot deflected there. <clears throat> Maybe and he's named after those two. Maybe. We've seen our fair share of interesting names, Brennan. <clears throat> we have indeed, and it looks like Coach Schwan will call a timeout early on. So, Andrew, Bears are down one goal after Trevor Butler put him on the board. Uh, 4.30 to go in the first. What do you think the keys are 
to the Bears uh, coming back and possibly winning this game. Well, Brennan, they got off to a slow start, but it looks like their intensity has picked up after uh, some great plays by players such as Seth Bergen and Trevor Butler. Hopefully the rest of the team will follow their lead, score a couple more goals, and I think faceoffs are going to be a key as well just so that the Bears can you know, not have to concede possession throughout the game. Sounds good to me. Seems like that's a story of every game, winning face-offs and cutting down on, on mistakes. And fans will be back with you after this timeout is over. Stay tuned. And we resume action with the Mustangs having possession on their offensive side of the field. Just working the ball around like they have been in the first quarter. A number sloppy pass there. And number 18 for Marcellus almost catches it, but turns it over to Chittenango. Nice outlet pass from Carson as he passes out to Trevor Butler. Trevor Butler showing off his speed. This is Chittenango. Team's got a lot of quick guys on it. Seth calling for it in the middle, but he doesn't receive it. Grand Zarnecki trying to take it himself, putting his big frame in the mix. Build demand hits it away, and uh, Seth picks it up as he's being harassed by two defenders, but he keeps possession. Fans not happy with the action that just occurred. One fan in particular wanted an over and back call. Not sure if that was picked up on the audio. You never know. You seem to say that a lot, Brennan. What, you never know? Yeah. Well, I saw the net jiggle there, but the ball did not fall to the back of it. I think the goalie might have bumped on his save. Number 14 for Marcellus miscontrols it and Seth picks it up and Bill Deban now has it. He takes a shot which is saved but it'll stay with the Bears. Grand Zarnucky starts with it behind the net. <clears throat> Looks like he's about to do a spin move but on the verge of being double teamed, tries to pass to his teammate Seth, but ball sails out of bounds. Number 10, Gabe Van Order with the ball. He dodges between two defenders, and he sneaks a shot in under Carson Maciek, and is now. 3-1 to the Mustangs. But that's his second goal on the night. 2.23 remaining in the quarter. It's like Christian Sirio is going to be doing the faceoff here. He's coming off an injury. I think he's b back to healthy now, which is good for the Bears because he's one of the senior leaders. He is known for his speed. <laughs> that is true. He's also proud of his Italian heritage. Wait, Christian's Italian? Yeah, you would have never guessed. So Christian Sario not able to win the face off there. And number 18. Liam Tierney sneaks one past Carson. So two quick goals from the Mustangs there. That's not something the Bears want to 
see early on in the game, especially in the first quarter. The score is four to one. Spurgeon will come back in and try the face off against Nate Garlow. Well, let's see if he can win it because, as I said earlier, Brennan the Mustangs just won one of those face offs and then scored quickly. Garlow won the face off and had a nice juke move. Garlow looking to take on Spurgeon 101. Spurgeon does well on defense, forces him to pass it out. Number 26, Sam Rice. Now number one's got it. He shoots, but it's wide. Marcellus will keep the ball. So that's Jake Graham with a good defense right now. Forcing number 18, Liam Tierney to pass it away. And number 26 for the Mustangs gets a goal. It's Sam Rice. So that's three quick for the Mustangs. After Chenango called the timeout, which is a little weird. Yeah, we're wondering if that timeout maybe have killed their M times V, their momentum. I had to take my saying, Andrew. It's Miss Carp's saying, Brennan. It's my broadcast saying. I believe that's you. You never know. Nope. And Christian S Sario wins the face off. Well, the Italian Stallion loses the ball, but he gains it back. There's Trevor Butler with the ball now. Well, Brennan looks like Marcellus right now is in a man-to-man. -man. As they get an entry pass to Trevor, unable to get the shot off. It appears so, Andrew, but you never know. If you're going to take my momentum jokes, I can just keep saying that. Christian Sario able to break up the pass. And Carson trying to show off his wheels again, but... Marcel's player was already there. Great save by Carson. Right as the opening quarter comes to an end. And Bears fans, we will be back when the second quarter of play begins.
Welcome back, fans. The second quarter will begin with Seth Spurgeon taking it at midfield after a, some controversy with the faceoff. Controversy? Fancy way of saying controversy. Controversy. That one's thanks to Jimmy Fallon. Well, Seth with the shot, but... Bounced off, out. bounced off Trainer John's cart. I hope he's all right. He's hard at FD Cosine Theta. That's work. Andrew, For those of you physics fans you, at home. Are you going to speak in physics terms the rest of the broadcast? No, I just thought I'd get that one in. Grant Zarnacki with the pass. Great. Over. Great oh. pass to Cooper, but... Unable to find the back of the net there. That was a great play. Possibly drawn up by the Bears. Well, Brennan, going into the second quarter, what do you think the Bears need to improve on? Just cutting down on the little mistakes. Hey, Grant Zarnacki finds the back of the net there. Sorry about cutting off your question, but that's the second goal for the Bears tonight. Cutting the deficit to just three goals, 5-3 with 11-20 going in the second quarter. And you Bears fans get the luxury of watching that replay over again, thanks to the great camera work. I believe that's Alyssa Bates. But anyway, going back to your question, Andrew, I think uh, if they cut down on little mistakes and start passing it well like they just did there, had two quick shots on goal, I think they can crawl right back into this game. Well, they're certainly off to a good start, making it 5-2. Let's see if uh, Seth loses the face off to... Number four. Uh, Cooper Young showing off his skills back to football season when he played safety. Uh, I believe he tackled Nate Garlow in a football game, too, so a little deja vu action there. Just well, less pads. Cooper's cer certainly earning his nickname of the Enforcer. I told you. He is not afraid to put his body on the line. He's not. He's setting a good example for the rest of the team. Hope that example is not to just tackle people. Well, yeah, the rest of the team could do it without <laughs> fouling, but it's the principle is and number that, 10 for Gabe Van Order for Marcellus scores. I believe that's his third. He has a hat trick already, and you could tell the immediate impact of losing a player. Cooper had to go sit on a penalty, and that open, wide open shot for Marcellus. It's tough for Carson to save a one-on-one -on -one from three feet out. Well, I may have to take back that statement about following his example. You never know. Well, that certainly killed their M times V momentum. All right, Andrew, once is enough. <laughs> Ryan Pitt in the mix along with Christian Sirio and Cooper Young again. Big scrum for the ball. I believe that's Joey Larini playing defense. If I'm not mistaken, he has switched numbers. I don't remember seeing him as number four. Well, the familiar face, Gabe Van Order, shoots, but it's wide. And now number 18, Liam Tierney has the ball. Working around the back of the goal, and he passes it out. A shot for Marcellus. Carson just giving a sneak peek of his wheels, taking three steps. Well, I'm surprised that Carson didn't get that ball. His first three steps are quite fast. It, sometimes he knows when he's beat, like when a player has quite a large advantage over him because that's what you need in order to beat Carson in a race. Great save there by Carson. Went to his knees and caught the ball off the his own block. A little fake pass there from Carson as well. Christian Sirio with the swim move left the player on the ground. Showing off his football skills. Well as his pass is intercepted as not showing off his football skills there. <laughs> that was
was unfortunate, to say the least. And looks like Coop Dean Forster Young will get another penalty thrown on him. Oh, that's a great nickname for Cooper. I agree. He's already had two penalties. It's not even a halftime. Well, you know, Brennan, his heart and determination certainly is there, but he could do it a little cleaner. I don't think he's trying to be dirty. Well, this I don't think he is either. Tough but game play. But as it's turned out, one foul has already turned out to be costly. He doesn't want this one to be costly either. As Carson Maciag with the great save, showing off those wheels, but did not get to it. Showing off the stick skills as he throws it behind his back. It's always impressive to watch Carson run. Not just run, just watch Carson play. Carson coming out of the net to try to make that save. For 21, Cameron Tackley scoops it up and he passes to Seth Spurgeon. Let's see if and he comes out with a spin move. You know, it's cool to watch Seth, it's both uh, Seth and Christian play because they play with such similar styles. It's hard to yeah. tell them apart at times. Well, you know, Seth is number 19 and Christian's number 8. Don't know what correlation you're trying to make there. Maybe if you're trying to tell them apart, you could just look at the back of their jersey. Oh, I thought you were trying to make a comparison. I'm like, yes, Andrew, they both are wearing numbers. I'm just trying to help you out, Brennan. Thanks, Andrew, but we see Marcellus get another goal, their seventh, with 8.09 to go in the second. I'm not sure who scored that one. Now Marcellus with a, quite a few substitutions. And uh, with just over eight minutes left in this quarter, let's see if the Bears can get back a couple goals before halftime. That's like the third. I don't know what that's called, a penalty or? Illegal faceoff, I don't, sure. I'm not sure. Illegal move by Nate Garlow on a face-off. So, Bill Demand will start with the ball. Coop, the enforcer young. Getting a shot. And it looks like Marcellus won the race to that one. Number 29. Ian Silcox. You know anyone with the last name e or Silcox, Andrew? I don't. It's unique. It is. Maybe as a brother on the team, we don't have the full roster. You never know. <laughs> well, Marcellus are just slowing things down here. It's been moved by number 14. Like another penalty, not on Cooper. That's uh, Billy Demand. So he will go take a knee for the penalty. And the Bears will play a man down for the third time this evening. Well, Marcellus, being a man up, is going to look to pass it around. It's a fake shot. And a goal by number two. And considering we don't have the full roster, we don't know his number. Carson, not too happy about that right there. It's, he would have had to make a near impossible save coming out of the net, playing one-on-one. -on -one. Does that make the score 7-2 now, Brennan? 8-2, Andrew. 8-2. Plenty of time. Plenty of time to go. It is only the second quarter. Hey, if we can see the Warriors blow a 3-1 to one lead. 
Well, that hasn't been the case lately. They've they've had two straight sweeps in the playoffs. So, so far. have the Cavs. First yeah. time in, I believe, NBA playoff history. The two teams start out 8-0 in playoffs. Well, actually, it is not. I saw the stat earlier, and it happened in 1989, I want to say, with the Lakers and the Pistons. All right, well, first time in a while then. Yes, first time in a long while as number five Ryan Pitt with the shot. But Marcellus will keep the ball, or will regain the ball, actually. Number 15, Kian Linder. I believe that's how you say his name. If I'm not mistaken, he played football, too. A lot of football players that I recognize because I played, played against them. I can't say I recognize any soccer players. Maybe I would if they didn't have helmets on. <laughs> I'll have to ask Seth after the game. See if he recognized anybody. There's another penalty. And a uh, goal that you oh. looked away for a second. I believe that penalty was on like Cooper Young. <laughs> but I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> See if he goes over and takes a knee. Was that penalty after the goal? It was in the act of shooting. So it may occur after. I believe Coach Schwan called a timeout as well. So with exactly six minutes remaining in the second quarter, with a score 9-2, to two, we will take a short break and come back after the timeout. And action resumes after that timeout was called. So Cooper is in the penalty area, taking a knee. I was going to say penalty box, but he's just on the sideline, so it'll be the penalty area. That's an area he is quite familiar with this game. Well, Brandon, it's not like <laughs> hockey. Carson Maciag showing off his wheels straight into the ground. Should have gotten a replay on that one, but he probably didn't want to watch that over and over again. So, anyway. Well, Brennan, the, the turf monster gets the best of us. I didn't even see exactly what happened, but I just looked up and he was, like, face planted. So, the net moved and people thought it was goal, but I think the ball hit the outside of the net. Spurgeon. Lost possession, going one on three right now. Well, Brandon, certainly from our angle, it looked like a goal, but it did indeed hit the outside of the net, and Chin Angle will take the ball upfield as Ryan Pitt gets the ball. 
a string of Django passes, gets the ball up quickly. Ryan tries to pass to Seth, but he can't catch the pass. And Ryan with the hit on the Marcellus player, and the rest call a penalty. And quite a few penalties this game yes. by Chenango. And this time it's not on Cooper. Nope, but it's on their other midi, Ryan Pitt. Well, Marcellus will again be a man up. Let's see if the Bears can play well on defense. Wait it out. Well, some tough play in the middle there. Some as uh, number two. Zach Wilsey takes the ball away, and there's now a chase for the ball. And Bill Demand fighting with two Marcellus players. Large scrum, in fact, and number 26, 25, I believe. Heads the ball from Marcellus, pa passes up to Gabe Van Order, and he shows off his wheels. But he's against Seth Spurgeon, and Spurgeon's able to keep up with him. And Gabe Van Orden passes it to number two in the middle, and he scores. Well, for the Mustangs, that now makes it 10-2. to two. Well, Brennan, while you were, I believe you're looking up a trivia question. No, not entirely. I was no. looking up the name for a group of wild horses so I could, instead of calling them a swarm of Mustangs at the ball, it's either a team of Mustangs, a stable of Mustangs, a troop of Mustangs, or a stud of Mustangs. A stud? A stud. Oh, a stud. But that's a group belonging to one owner, so. I'm not sure that applies. Yeah. Well, Seth Spurgeon wins the face off for the Bears. And he's going up against number 15. He breezes by him. Now he goes around the back of the goal, and he's looking for an option to pass to. Number 15, Kian Linder. Again, I believe that's how you say his name. Number 22 with the shot. Billy Demand. But a save from the Marcellus goalie. Number three, Dan Kasich. Now the Bears with the ball. Carl Farber with it. Passes out to Bill Demand. Bill Demand, yep. Yeah. Now Trevor Butler dodging against number 16. And he finds the back of the net. What a shot. He didn't get too far towards in towards the net, but he fired away and snuck it past the goalie. As we see the replay here. What camera work by Alyssa Bates to get that shot? That's Trevor second on the night, third for the team. All the Bears could use more where that came from. It's they're facing a seven goal deficit currently. And yet another illegal face off. We should really find out the actual term for that, Andrew. We should. I can't say I'm a lacrosse aficionado. Number five, Ryan Pitt. Or an official. No. <laughs> Ryan Pitt fires way from deep. Luckily, Grant Zarnecki is behind the, the crease. Behind the cage, as I believe lacrosse players called it. Now Carl Farber with the ball, being marked tightly. So he, he tried to get a shot on. But Grant Zarnacki is there again. Trying to 
Trevor Butler looking to complete the hat trick, and he does right there. Trevor having a great game tonight, has a third goal with exactly two minutes to go. So we see the quick replay of that. Two minutes to go in the second quarter. Trevor Butler gets a hat trick. More great camera work from Alyssa Bates. Trevor trying to get some M times V going for his team. Yes, Andrew, I just said it again, some M times V. And see if he can't get his team back on track. Well, let's see what happens with the faceoff here, if it's a legitimate faceoff or not. And it is, and Marcellus wins, wins it. Number four, Nate Garlow against the Italian. Christian Serio. Pass dropped by Garlo. And Cooper tried to come lay a hit on him. But Garlo finds his teammate number 13, Emmett Barry, who buries that one in the net. Very punny, Brennan. I try, Andrew. I try. We go back to the face off. Can't tell if that's Christian Serio or. Yep, it was him. Nate Garland wins it again. I used that trick you taught me earlier, Andrew. Christian's number eight. It's very astute of you. Now Sam Rice now with the ball, number 26, passes it over to number 24. Shane Rowe. Well, it looks like that may have been a crease violation a number 10 gave in order. He l looked to have juked himself out of his own shoes. Ryan Pitt is being hounded by three defenders, but he shows off his wheels, and he evades them, passes it over to Carl Farber, passes it into Grant Zarnecki, who loses the ball. It's number 15, <laughs> Ken Linder. But it looks like there's a violation on Marcellus. Well, as we learned earlier, there was a troop of Mustangs. Some may say a stable of Mustangs. Or a herd. Yeah. Build the man, breaks free, and shot wide than that. Is there a name for a pack of bears, Brennan? Or a group of bears? Is it a pack? I'm not sure. Might be a herd. That'll be a trivia question. So we're closing in the last 10 seconds. Well, are you talking about bear cubs or bear, like bears in general? Adult bears. It's a sloth of bears. A sloth of bears. Or a sleuth. Do you know what cubs are called? I don't. A litter. A litter of oh, cubs. That makes sense. Well, with that trivia, interesting trivia fact. That's, that's, that's a good way yeah. to end the opening half, I would agree. So we will be back in roughly 10 minutes with the second half coverage. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, Bears fans. As we apologize about the late start, but in the meantime, Grant Zarnecki scored a goal for Chitnango. And a couple of shots for Marcellus. They now have the ball. And the score is now 11 to 5. That's number 10, Gabe Van Order with the ball. I was just down by the side of the field, sitting at the fence, and I got a good view of that goal by Grant Zarnacki, I believe it was. It was a nice play, good offensive movement, and Corey Fredericks in the goal now, replacing Carson Macy. I gets his first shot, gets past him. I believe that's Grant's second of the game. Is now he has a brace, as they say in soccer. Don't know what that means. It's two goals. Why do they call it a brace? I don't know. I wear a knee brace. Why do they call it a hat trick? I don't know. That's our next trivia question, folks. Why is it called a hat trick? Hat trick? Hat trick. Well, now on the faceoff, Seth Spurgeon fighting with number four, Nate Garlow, as Nate Garlow wins it. But the ref calls a violation of some sort. I'm not sure what that gesture was. Coop Young tries the entry pass into Carl Farber, but he can't control it. Now the goalie for the Mustangs has it. Passes it out to number 23, Sean Matter, I believe it is. Well, if any of the viewers at home knew why they called it a hat trick without looking it up, I'd be quite impressed. So according to the NHL, in the 1940s, a Toronto haberdasher used to give free hats to players with the Toronto Maple Leafs when they scored three goals in a game, which introduced the hat trick expression into the world of hockey. So if that is true, that is it's quite the story. Well, That's Brennan. Great trivia question. How about another trivia question? Was it a haberdasher? No, why do they call it a brace in soccer? He's number 10. Gave in order, as he has most of the night. He's had it. Over to number 26, Sam Rice. He shoots, and it goes over, but it will stay with the Mustangs. Marcellus just passing it around. He gave in order shoots, and Corey Fredericks makes a save as he dives on it. But I'm not sure why, but Marcellus will get the ball. I'm afraid to say I missed that. Now number 26 with it. I missed that. I'm looking up hat tricks and braces. Looks like there's quite a few stories on hat trick, but we're going to go with the haberdasher in Toronto. And number 26, uh, Sam Rice with the goal. Gets it past Corey Fredericks. Regrettably, I have to say, it was a very nice shot. Upper 90. So to answer your question about the brace, sorry to interrupt, it looks like it's an old term that means a pair of some animal. I would like just cut it down. A pair of some animal caught in the hunt. So a brace means a pair then. Yeah, we'll just go with that. We'll, the dumbed down version of the entire paragraph that was there. Well, it's not a very common term in soccer. I believe it's English. It's Ryan Pitt with the shot, and it goes over. And the Bears will keep it, I think. It looks that way, looks that way. Number 23, I believe that's Eddie Hool. 
I haven't said his name much tonight. And he's a starter. Not sure if he's coming back from injury or. Now it's a break for the Mustangs. Number two with the point blank shot and he scores. There's a lot of commotion out in the stands too. Well, the score is now 13 to five. 14 to five. 14 to five, excuse me. So starting to look like the first time these two teams faced <laughs> off. The score, the final score was 15 to five. Speaking of face-offs, we'll see if Christian can win this one. Yes, Brendan? Hmm? I didn't say anything. Well, you were looking at me. You looked like you wanted to say something. The enforcer ended up on the ground of that play. Not sure whose ball it will be Bears' ball. Looks like it rolled out of bounds. I was too busy looking at Andrew, who's for some reason looking at me. Looks like penalty flag was thrown. Probably delayed penalty. Might have been for like slashing or something. I think he's ignoring me. Well, a nice spin move by Bell Demand, but a save from. Number three, Dan Kasich, the Mustangs goalie. And it looked like that penalty was against Cooper and not on him. Makes for a nice change. So now Carl Farber has it. He passes over to Bill Demand. Back to Farber. Excuse me, that pass was actually to number 23, Eddie Hool. By mistake for Bill Demand. And Andrew, since you're looking at the game, we have a special delivery by our very own Mr. Muller. He brought up great man, brought up hot chocolate and french fries up to the booth. As we see Billy Demand with the ripper, caught upper 90. It's hard to stop a ball that's coming that fast. Great shot and a great replay there. See the ball just hit the top of the pipe and come straight down. What a game, or what a shot that was. Thank you very well, much, Mr. Muller. I'm yeah. glad I'm not Tommy Valentine because I do not enjoy warm milk. So we do enjoy some hot chocolate watching 14-6 lacrosse game on a somewhat brisk Janago evening. Well, it shouldn't be brisk considering it's the middle of May. We've already had 80-degree weather, but, you know. A lot of thanks to Mr. Muller, who I'm sure is very happy with the Cavs' performance so far in the playoffs. Thank you, Mr. Muller. Starting eight and zero, just like the Warriors. I see. I As see. the Mustangs score a goal, number eight. <laughs> if, if you Bears fans get some food from our concession stand, ask for the Tommy Illusion Burger. That's a new one that they might come out with. Well, fans at home, the Mustangs have won that face off, and they are now passing it around. Looks like a couple of their bench players are in, but number 10, Gabe Van Order, st is still in. Corey Fredericks gets a nice save off the Van Order shot. 
And now the enforcer with the long pass up to number 21, Cameron Tackley. <laughs> he threw his stick trying to save that ball from going out. Well, folks, I just burned my tongue. <clears throat> the hot chocolate's very warm. <laughs> yeah, Brendan, I don't think we'll be drinking any of that until at least the fourth quarter. Yeah, that just burned. <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> I'm going to start to sweat soon. Wow, that's warm. Corey Fredericks with the stuff at the net. If I'm not mistaken, that's a crease violation. Cooper Young fighting a troop of Mustangs. There's a tuple up, tussle up as one of the Mustangs goes down. And Ryan Pitt will start with the ball. Speaking of Mustangs, Brennan, the Kentucky Derby was recently. That's true. Ryan Pitt takes a hard hit. Goes tumbling out of bounds. Yes, the Kentucky Derby was recent. Always dreaming one. I'm not a huge fan of the Kentucky Derby. It's not that I don't like it, just I never seem to watch it. It's kind of like a Warriors basketball game, isn't it? <laughs> well, as Mr. Muller says, nobody cares about it, just like the Warriors basketball games. I feel like uh, Tommy Valentine might Back to differ with that statement. Well, the, the man with the illusion burger named after him will not be happy about that as the Mustangs score another goal. So with uh, four minutes, 21 seconds to go, the Mustangs are nursing their commanding lead. So, looks like Nate Garlow had another illegal face-off. Not sure what that's called, but we'll just keep calling an illegal face-off. Well, Brennan, we're not entirely sure that there's a technical term for it. You never know. Bill Demand spinning through the de defense. So Marcellus will take over possession. Well, Brennan, I looked it up, and apparently it's called illegal procedure. Do you know why they call that? Well, there are a bunch of specific rules and you know steps in order that need to be followed for a face-off. I'm not going to read all, all of them because it's a long list. But if any of them are violated, then the ref can call a legal procedure. So you learn something new every day. You never know with these games. Now the Mustangs are passing it around, and the Bears look to be in a zone defense. Or no, they play man. They compact it in. I was talking to Coach Swan about that earlier. He, he's a fan of sticking to strictly man defense. Well, I suppose that they were staying in the same spot because none of the Marcellus players were moving around either then. But this man defense looks pretty tight as number two for Marcellus has a shot and Goes wide. Now, number 24, Shane Rowe, will pick up the ball. Mr. Larson, why don't you talk to Brian about this kid's character over here? <coughs> Maybe. It would be a good topic.
So it looks like Nango will start with the ball here after Cooper was on the ground. Well, Brennan, as twi time is dwindling down in this third quarter. Two minutes, 40 seconds. As Corey Fredericks makes a save. Our, our security officer, Mr. Muller, tells me that you're a kid of character. <coughs> is, it, is that a two-time kid of character, actually? That is. I was honored by the school. It was, very, it was greatly appreciated. But can't say it's all myself. Everyone in our school tries to be of good character. It's a lot, it's a lot easier with the people I, I'm with every day. What were the words that you were awarded for? I was awarded hope and leadership. Two great descriptors. Very, Thank you very much. A very deserving recipient. As I was, as hopefully you picked up in a microphone, Mr. Miller, very good friend Tommy is uh, great. He, he should have won hope because he's always hopeful for his Texas Tech Red Raiders football team. He always hopes they're going to turn it around and have a winning season. Every year is the year. Every year is the year. And it's he's admirable. Always, he's always hopeful of his Golden State Warriors. Well, they've had a little more success than Texas Tech. They did blow a 3-1 to lead last year, though. This is true. But going back to the game, a couple of shots by Marcellus. And I don't know if those of you at home saw, but Cooper, the enforcer, Young, playing good defense on Gabe Van Order, forcing him off of his shot. His number 14 passes around behind the crease and almost a pass across the goal, but... Good defense by Chitnango as uh, Marcellus is forced to miscontrol it. And another shot by Gabe Van Order. <clears throat> we have a uh, minute 14 to go or 11.4 seconds. I'm pretty sure it's a minute 14, though. And Marcellus has had a long bout of possession here. It's really been hurting the Bears. That Their attack men look pretty... Lonely up by the midfield line. They haven't had much to do in the past couple minutes. It's hard to score when you don't have the ball. Yep. And <coughs> good defense by number 21, Cameron Tackley, but ref. He's called for a penalty. He will have to come off. As will number 11, Cooper Young. Although. I believe Coop's just being substituted out. For a minute, I thought he was being called for his fourth penalty. I wonder how many penalties it takes in order to get a card or if I'm they're not sure. related. Well, sticking with the theme of the past couple of minutes, Marcellus will keep the ball after a missed shot. Although there looks to be some confusion, as I don't think there are any lacrosse balls over there. But now they keep passing it around. And the Bears, oh, shot by Marcellus. Corey Frederick's trying to show off his wheels, but I think Carson Macy has got him beat in that department. So coming in in the final 20 seconds to go, Marcellus has possession. They pass out of bounds again. So the ball will head with the Bears down to the other side of the field. Well, the Bears will look to make a quick attack in the last few seconds of this quarter, see if they can get a goal back. As you can see on the camera, if you just saw the person throwing a new lacrosse ball down the sideline, it's Tyrell Downer. But, uh, one of the Bears seniors, they hope to get him back, hopefully in the next couple games. It looks like Coach Schwan called a timeout here. So with 11.7 to go, he'll stop play one more time, probably one more time before the end of the quarter. And we will come back to you when the timeout is over.
So five seconds to go. Looks like the Bears will just hold out and bring this to the fourth quarter. Res Ryan Pitts running away from a couple defenders. And that'll do it for the third quarter. So with a score of 16-6, to six, Marcellus will take a commanding lead into the fourth quarter. But you never know. Anything can happen. And let's go Bears in the fourth. So, after that quick break in between quarters, yep, intermission, Ryan Pitt takes it all the way up the sideline for the Bears. So, as we were talking about off camera during the break, we've had a lot of great events here in Chenango, and we have a lot of upcoming stuff. Um, so, earlier today, Andrew, mind telling the fans what you took part in? Well, you and I both took part in the AP Calculus test as uh, number six for Chittenango scores. Is it? Well, I was unaware as I think he's gone under. He's undergone a number change. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, AP Calculus today, Andrew? Yeah, it was it was not as hard. Well, I have mixed feelings about it, Brendan. Some parts of it were relatively easy, I thought, and there were other questions where I was clueless. Yeah, I'm sure. You? I'm sure that's how oh, I felt like that for a couple of them, but I'm sure that's how the majority felt. Yeah. Not an easy class as it was, but no. Yeah. Well, we had a great teacher, Mr. Clancy. We did. We're coming in on uh Last week for AP test, actually. We are. Friday's the last day. That's our last test. I know seniors are especially happy about that. The juniors sitting in the other room can look forward to that. They and don't sound too enthusiastic, <laughs> but... Well, I know they learned some AP physics this year that they loved. <laughs> they, I hear that they strive for five, and they thought they achieved that. Look forward to seeing their names up on the wall. Anywho, uh, so upcoming, or no, what else happened? Last night with track, or was that two yeah. nights ago? The uh, Jingle Bears track team had their senior night uh, yesterday, I believe. Mm -hmm. And they faced Pulaska, and they won by a commanding score of 121 to 20. Uh, how does that, how can you compare that to another sport? I'm not really that is too a, sure. an overwhelming victory. It is in football. It, well, in track there are 141 points available. So in in some other sports, in basketball, for example, it might be similar to winning by 50. In soccer, it might be similar to winning by five or six. Football, winning by 35, 40. So quite imp quite impressive. A large victory, yes. 
and I'm sure they'll be happy that it came on their senior night. A couple of those seniors that are on the team are Phil Abel, Michael Capling, uh, Dakota and Diego Prado. The Prado brothers, yep. Nick Stanton. I don't want to miss anybody, but. Yes, there are know, other seniors. We don't have the roster with us. But congrats to them. As they look in the next two weeks to do well in their league and sectional meets. As last year, they narrowly missed out to, uh, to winning the sectional title. We lost by one point to Homer. Oh, that's unfortunate. It was. Well, best of luck to them. Maybe we can get some coverage of that and put it up on our page. Oh, that shot hits the pipe and goes all the way back to over midfield. It's number 23, Eddie Hool. Picks it up, but he loses it. Now number 18 for the Mustangs has it. And he gets a pass to the number 10. Gabe Van Order with his fourth, I believe, and of he the game. Finds it, yeah, but finds it back at the net. So anyway, looking, going back to our conversations about events coming up. So for this video crew, we're hoping to maybe get some coverage of the ladies' golf team, uh, like I said, get some track, probably some more lacrosse games. I hear the boys' lacrosse senior night is next Tuesday. We will definitely be here for that one. Do you know who they're facing? Not entirely no. sure. I have to look that one up. Well, hopefully they can get a win on their senior night as they only need a couple more victories for sectionals as we mentioned earlier. Baseball team made sectionals today, or the other day. They did. Uh, Some interesting circumstances associated with that the, victory. Mainly because of weather. They're not able to get all of their games in or something along those lines. So I think all the teams made sectionals, but, nice. hey, they made it. So yep. maybe we can get another baseball game in, figure out equipment somehow. Maybe a couple more softball games. Plenty of sports. Well, a new goalie is coming in for Chenango. As I don't know who number nine is. As it's Carson Maciek. Is it? Yeah. Oh, well, we have Tanner Laramie as number nine on the roster. So well, that is the source of my confusion. From the sounds of it, Corey Fredericks got a penalty thanks to our spotters mm -hmm. over in the other room. And another goal by Game Van Order. His fifth. Not much you can do in that situation. I'm not sure if there's a name for four goals or five goals, but if there is one, he has it. What else we have coming up, Andrew? I believe we Friday we have the school fair. Yep. Can I talk a little about that? Well, it's a nice event for all the schools in our district and some members of various honor societies will be volunteering there, such as National Honor Society and French Honor Society. Uh, anything else to add, Brennan? I think uh, there will be some live entertainment, live music. Mr. Vlardy usually gets a group together. As Carson Macy gets a great save, falling to the ground, loses his stick. Not sure what's going on right now. Wow, that was that was something else right there. Players were just hitting each other, didn't even have the ball. Luckily, no extracurricular activities happened. <laughs> um, yeah, back to the school fair. Mr. Blardy does a great job. He's group, usually a band group together. So everyone should go watch that. Ms. Carson gets a save. I know Mrs. Carps, she's been working hard getting ready for the school fair. Making color wheels, so. Color wheels, robots. Everyone come stop, support the science department. Marcellus. Number eight scoops it up. It decides to 
pull it back and set something up. Well, Brendan, I've done some research, and uh, although they're not official terms in Europe, there are some slang terms for four goals and five goals. Four goals is called a poker, and five goals is called a handful. Five goals. The five makes sense. Yeah, it handful. makes sense. I'm not exactly sure why it's called a poker, but apparently that's a European term. Well, hopefully this game doesn't start to get chippy as a couple more players ended up on the ground there. A lot of hits happening. There's 7-19 remaining. Well, the score is 18-7. to seven. So a little bit yeah. higher scoring than the first match between these two teams. So we do have running clock now, I believe. What's the rule on that, Andrew? 10 goals. Is it? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. It is 12 goals. So we do not have running clock. It's 10 for girls as our <laughs> <laughs> that girls across expert because she used to be a coach. Yeah. Miss Carp. As well as us. the leader of the video crew. Also a physics teacher. Also, to my knowledge, the only undefeated girls lacrosse coach in Chenango history. Yeah. Well, you can also add golf to the many talents. But going back to the game, it's number 12 with the ball for Marcellus. Going back to golf, maybe Miss Carp will go out and golf a couple holes with, when we cover the girls' golf match. Number 12 lost it from ourselves, yeah. yeah. If we do go golfing, I wouldn't mind coming. I mean, I can't say I'm very good, but I do know a little bit about golf. Welcome to come along. I don't yeah. – well, I golf when I can. It's a fun leisure sport. Mm -hmm. It's a lifetime sport. So we got 5.55 remaining. Marcel is still nursing their commanding lead of 11 goals. That shot hit the pipe and ricocheted out towards the sideline. I don't know what you think, but I would not want to be on the receiving end of one of those shots. No, I would not. That's why I don't play lacrosse as number eight. For Marcella scores, and he will remain unnamed as we do not have the full roster. We have a lot of props to those guys still fighting yeah. out there. Yeah, they are. They are fighting valiantly as they do have seven goals so far, but fortunately they haven't had the same success on the defensive end. Maybe the Sloth of Bears can get it going. Oh, pardon me, Sleuth. Number 26, Sam Rice wins the faceoff. Number 22 for the Bears. Bill Demand was on him like way on Rice. The pick set there. Number 18 passes out to number 13 for the Mustangs. As a troop of Mustangs, as in the Attacking third for Marcellus. But they look to slow things down, methodically passing it around. Trying to kill about four and a half minutes. Well, they have to shoot eventually, as I believe there is a time-wasting penalty in lacrosse. I'm not sure how long it is. Maybe around two minutes, but... Like a shot clock and basketball. Shot there. Yep. And that'll reset the... Imaginary shot clock. Quick shout out to the Booster Club, hooking us up with french fries up in the booth, hot chocolates, do a lot. That Hooking us up with all the equipment. 
brand new headsets. Yep. As well as this nice TV. Everyone here appreciates it. They do a lot for us. Good shot there by number 23, Eddie Hool. And number three, Carl Farber, will recover it. So he's being played tightly. wonder if that's Sam Rice. I'm like, wait on Rice. It was not. It's like Marcellus will take over possession. It got pretty dark out here, Andrew. These late games playing under the lights. It's very observant of you, Brennan. Thanks. I tried. A little confusion over where the ball went there by the two players involved. It's number four, Joey Larini. But Marcellus has the ball, and number one for Marcellus dodges Larini, but he passes it off. Now the Bears' man defense will try to get the ball back. Marcellus is in no rush. Nice spin move there by number 16. He passes out to number 19. Looks like Marcellus is just swinging around. Try to waste as much of the final two minutes as they can. Twelve going in, he loses it, but it's picked up by number one. Good defense there by Joey Larini. Zach Wilsey looked to have scooped it up, but ball will stick with Marcellus. <coughs> number sixteen going in, he shoots, and a good save by Carson Maciag. He looks for an option, an outlet. And Looks like he might take it himself. Yeah, he'll slowly take the ball upfield before he... Oh, he fakes, and he's showing off his wheels. But he passes to number 10, Trevor Butler, who's got a hat trick today. Over to Eddie Hool, who misses, but number 6, Tanner Laramie, sprinting after it. And we're in the final minute of this game. So... Doesn't seem like the Bears will be able to pull this one out tonight. Uh, still have plenty of games remaining in the latter half of their season. Trying to make sectional pu push. Hopefully they can do it. We'll be keeping everyone updated. With oh. the games, the Bears have a game this Thursday, and like we said earlier, they have another game the on night. Tuesday, the senior night. Hopefully they'll get victor victories in each of those. As Seth has a shot, but that's saved. And the goalie for Marcellus is being down, and there's a huge scrum. Penalties being thrown by the refs, and they don't want to see it get ugly in the last minute. Final 15 seconds. Looks like this game will be just about over. I'll give a quick shout-out to everyone that helped with this broadcast tonight. I believe we have Alyssa Bates on camera. Lauren Hardy's over there helping out doing the clock. Hannah Butler, as she's always here, it seems. She's doing a great job on Wirecast. She won't miss a game. The wonderful Mrs. Carp, always here helping out. And Andrew, great job tonight. Thank you. You too, Brennan. Um, we will be in with various sports coming up. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.